Vegas 3-1, going down. 3-1 is going down. I was a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force in the F-117 Stealth Fighter, and I participated in Operation Allied Force. My task was to take out one of the most high-value strategic command and control targets in Belgrade. Hello, and welcome to a new video. The Lockheed Nighthawk became the symbol of American air superiority. Officially unveiled in 1988, it remained a tightly held secret for years. Its legend was simple. The invisible aircraft was seen as untouchable. But a single incident shattered that myth forever. The only documented shootdown of a stealth bomber by enemy forces. To understand what happened, let's travel back 25 years. In the late 1990s, ethnic tensions between Serbs and the ethnic Albanian majority in Kosovo escalated. What began as an internal conflict turned into a humanitarian catastrophe. When the final negotiations failed in March 1999, NATO made a historic decision. For the first time, it intervened militarily without a UN mandate. Operation Allied Force began. For 80 days, NATO flew more than 10,000 combat missions against Yugoslav military targets. The objective was clear. Cripple Serbia's war machine and force the withdrawal of Serbian troops from Kosovo. Aviano Air Base in northern Italy, just two flight hours from Belgrade the beating heart of NATO's air power. Day six of the air campaign, March 27, 1999. Four Nighthawk stealth bombers take off. One of them, Lieutenant Colonel Dale Zelko, 35 years old, Gulf War veteran. <laughs> Call sign, Vega 3-1. His mission, take out the Serbian Air Force Command Center in Belgrade. His weapons, two laser-guided GBU-27 paveway bombs, each nearly 900 kilograms of steel, precise as a scalpel. Bad weather, heavy rain, poor visibility, and strong winds make the mission even harder. No escort aircraft would fly that day. But what exactly made the Nighthawk so special? Its revolutionary design, invisibility through pure geometry. The aircraft's surface was made of sharp, angular panels that didn't reflect radar waves. They deflected them. Every signal was scattered away, redirected from enemy radar. And on top of that, the jet was coated with a secret radar-absorbent material. The result? a radar cross-section smaller than that of a pigeon. To the Serbian radar systems of the time, the Nighthawk was a ghost in the sky. The price for that stealth? Aerodynamic instability. Total and absolute. Only a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire system kept it steady in the air. The Nighthawk was no beauty. It was an invisible scalpel whispering built for the darkest of nights. The flight took just under two hours. At 20,000 feet, they followed the Adriatic eastward, then turned north over Croatia into Serbian airspace. As soon as the formation crossed the border, the Nighthawks split up each taking a separate route toward its target. It was standard procedure. Strike multiple objectives at once and spread the risk. Dale Zelko was now on his own. 066, 27,000. Skate. Two, thank you. Nighthawk missions often followed the same corridors, a dangerous pattern. And this time, the Serbs knew more than Zelko could imagine. They didn't just know that the Nighthawks were flying. They knew when, where, and how. 
the NATO air tasking order for that night had already been leaked to the Serbs, through spies. The Serbian air defenses were ready. Their systems were old, relics from the 1960s, but smartly upgraded. Radar antennas mounted on improvised trucks, allowing them to relocate in minutes. Tracking software reprogrammed to send out only the briefest radar pulses, just long enough to catch a target before vanishing again. Dale Zelko had no idea where the danger was waiting for him that night. Live through bullseye, one zero zero six seven twenty five thousand spades. Thanks for one hostile. A fraction of a second was all it took. The brief opening of the bomb bay doors and the Nighthawk was visible. A nearby SA-3 missile system locked on. Colonel Zoltan Dany, commander of the 250th Air Defense Missile Brigade of the Yugoslav Army, gave the order. Two missiles launched! The fire control radar was active for just 17 seconds. The first missile missed. The second hit directly. The explosion tore through the Nighthawk's left wing. Zelko pulled the ejection handle. At 8,000 feet, he was thrown clear of the burning jet. The Nighthawk crashed near the village of Budanovci, 30 miles northwest of Belgrade, into an open field. A black fireball rose into the night sky. And with it, the myth of invisibility went up in flames. The entire incident was monitored in real time by a NATO AWACS aircraft orbiting high above the Adriatic Sea. Lieutenant Colonel Dale Zelko was injured, but alive. Immediately, he scrambled into a narrow irrigation canal, pulled out his survival radio, and began transmitting. He knew Serbian ground forces were already closing in. Back at NATO headquarters, the news hit like a thunderbolt. A stealth aircraft, thought to be untouchable, had just been shot down by a 30-year-old Soviet-era SA-3 missile system. The myth of invincibility <sighs> shattered in a single flash. Within minutes, the largest combat search and rescue operation of the war was launched. More than 40 aircraft roared into action. Exactly two hours after the shootdown, the first wave of F-16 lifted off from Aviano Air Base in Italy. Their mission? Clear the skies and silence the radars. The real mission began at 2 a.m. local time. In the dead of night, the morning after the shootdown. From Tuzla Air Base, just 80 miles west of Belgrade, three heavily modified Blackhawks roared into the darkness. These weren't standard helos. They were MH-53 Pavlos, specially engineered for covert, low-level night insertions. Flying nap of the earth, skimming treetops at 200 feet, guided only by infrared terrain-following radar and the faint glow of cockpit screens. On board, battle-hardened crews from the 20th Special Operations Squadron. 
They flew blacked out. No lights. No radio chatter unless absolutely necessary. Every second, the risk of being spotted. By radar, by searchlights, by a lucky Serbian patrol. Their target? The last known position of Lieutenant Colonel Dale Zelko. A lone American pilot, hiding in a muddy ditch, 45 miles inside hostile territory. The clock was ticking. The enemy was closing in. Only one thought. Get in. Get him. Get out. Reagan 3 do you have any further information on 3 1 over? No, I saw flashes. Let me try to figure out how to cack up the point. I saw launches on my point 26, about uh, 15 or 20 miles southwest of my position. Stand by, I'll give you some coordinates to work from. Ready when you are. The mission was not just a success, it was flawless. The pilot, the crew, and the rescue helicopter all returned without a single scratch. Years later, Dale Zelko and Zoltan Danny would meet face to face, enemies once, now turned friends. They met in Serbia in 2011, gave interviews, and spoke openly about that unforgettable night. Zelko would later say, I was the invisible man and he was the man who saw me. Their meeting stands as a powerful symbol of what endures. Not hatred, but mutual understanding between two soldiers, both doing their duty.